What is the only recession-proof career that's out there? I have so many friends in New York City and across the country that are losing their jobs, that are having their salaries cut, that are having their time cut, having to stay at home, and yet they still have the same regular expenses, having rent to pay, bills to pay, car payments, mortgages to their house, etc., credit card debt. It's, dude, it really sucks. And uh, I kind of want to make this video just to lend some insight into the ways in which you can recession proof your income to a degree. And obviously, you can't do it 100%. There's no such thing that is indestructible um, when it comes to business and wealth creation. Uh, Obviously, you can save a bunch of money under your mattress, but the actual value that that money is going to have in the future is going to fluctuate over time based on inflation, based on the the way that the U.S. dollar is valued as it is to other currencies. The purchasing power of that money is going to change over time. Same thing goes to if you're storing gold, like you're storing lots and lots of gold bars for the apocalypse. Well, when the apocalypse happens, the way that people value precious commodities are going to change. You don't know if someone's going to be willing to give you the things you need for shelter or weapons or money, um, all that kind of stuff. You don't know if they're going to be willing to trade that for your gold bars, or maybe they're just going to take your gold, right? So there's no such thing as something that is indestructible when it comes to value and wealth, um, as well as the, even the things you've learned. Let's just say you're a doctor and uh, you've accumulated a lot of knowledge, or let's just say even better, you're an accountant. You're an accountant. You spent many years in school and you've accumulated all this knowledge. You've built up um, this reservoir of talent. And yet, if for some reason it becomes obsolete where businesses are no longer in business, society doesn't function, those skills as an accountant aren't really going to be super helpful. People are going to be more looking to individuals who know how to cook, who know how to kill game, know how to prepare meats, um, make vegetables, farming, um, conquer other territories, use weapons. Like those, those skills are going to be way more in demand than being an accountant. So the the way that we think about this um, is obviously. I'm talking about in the context of our modern era and our modern age. So what I found is that the only way to recession-proof your income is to diversify it to the point where it's no longer just one income stream coming from one individual or from one product or one service or even from one area of the world. And the only way that I can do that Um, as an individual living in America is with an online business. And I got my start with blogging. And here's the reason why I think that's the case. Well, first of all, if you're working for an employer, at any point in time, that employer can decide to let you go for reasons which they might even make up might sound, you know, might sound normal. And if they're saying it, it might sound to them like reasonable, but they, they might just make it up, honestly. Um, at any point in time, a, sal- uh, a person can decide to cut your salary. They can decide to hold you back from a promotion, which maybe guarantees you more income. Particularly if you're not tied to the main way that that business is making money is bringing cash. Um, you're not a salesperson or you're not heavily entrenched in the marketing that's actually bringing in revenue into that company. You are disposable 100%. When a recession comes along, a depression comes along, the first people to go are the ones that don't in any way contribute massive value to that company. If you're a janitor or you're a secretary, you're not doing something that's really adding a lot of value. Even just you're just in operations, you're not bringing in cash. Uh, You are disposable. You're not vital to the life of that business. So thinking a little bit about that, first of all, I think it's we have to put this on the table that Being an employee is probably one of the most risky things that you can do in our modern age. Not only is job security not guaranteed anymore like it was for our parents' generation where you are going to work and you work at that job for 30 years of your life or 40 years, then you you can relax and you have basically these insurance insurance payments, um, which are a really nice severance package. Like That doesn't really exist anymore. And also... Nowadays, you're going to work at a job for maybe four years or three years, and you got to move on to another job. You got to convince another employer of your value to pay you a massive salary. Um, That in and of itself is in no way guaranteed that virtual bedrock, regular salaried income, which we're promised to other generations. So being a employee 
is puts you in the position of being highly, um, incredibly, uh, I would say, vulnerable to some of the things that happen in our society. Because let's just say that you do get fired. Well, now all of a sudden, the only income source that you have is probably from the money you invested, right? But that money likely is put into your 401k or is put into your Roth IRA, and you're not supposed to touch that until your retirement. So where are you going to get an extra income source? Um, It's probably just from your savings. You're going to be drawing on your savings, or you maybe will file for unemployment and hopefully get some benefits there. You're probably just going to be racking up credit card debt as you're trying to find your next job. So I think it really goes without saying that being an employee and having one source of income is the riskiest thing that you can do in society today. Now, a step better is obviously to get a little bit more involved with your investing and to put your money into an index fund or to invest in bonds, um, a REIT. Like These are really simple ways you can just go on the open market and you can buy a basket of stocks, You know the S&P 500, um, or if you want, you can invest in individual stocks, which is obviously super, super risky. But when a recession happens, as you see now, the stocks are going to go down. So the value of your investment is going to significantly decrease. Now, that's the worst time ever to take your money out of the stock market because you just wiped away all the capital appreciation, all the capital gains of your invested money. And that's when you need to draw on your investments is if you're in a difficult situation. So investing in stocks and bonds are not the greatest thing um, for that simple reason that it's going to be the, the value of that's going to be incredibly depressed along with the economy. Now, there's other stuff you can do, obviously, is like income investing, where you're investing for dividends, you know, high ticket bonds and REITs and, and these different asset classes. But also, when, when the economy is contracting, typically dividends are also going to be cut because if the company, the public company is not making a lot of money, they're not going to have the money to pay to shareholders. And thus, they might decide to cut dividends for the stock. Therefore, your income is going to be cut along with that. So some problems here I see with um, kind of what I call the, the hope and pray method, which is just giving your money over to Wall Street and to these public companies, which you have absolutely no control over. You can't decide if they're going to cut their dividend or not. You can't decide what they're going to do from a corporate structure or a corporate strategy perspective. I've had companies that I invested in publicly that end up going belly up. They decide to close their doors, you know? So you have a limited amount of control over your life, not only as an employee, but also as a investor. What I found to be the only way which you can seize back the reins and you can have control, you can have a say over the strategy in which you employ your money is to start a part-time business. And ideally, I would say start a full-time business. But I would say get, getting started with a part-time business is going to be a much more <clears throat> a much more strong and a much more resilient form of income in a recession than just, you know, trying to put your money up there in the stock market or um, trying to buy REITs in hopes that that's going to save you. Putting money into a part-time business is the best ROI when it comes to recession-proofing your income. And obviously the question is like, well, Sal, what's going to happen if my business ends up going belly up? Well, here's the great thing about that is as a business owner, number one, you can decide who's working for you. And if you pick the right type of business, you're not going to have super big capital expenses. You're not going to have lots and lots of freelancers working for you that you can't easily fire if you need to. You can very easily scale back your business and you as the owner can obviously never be fired. It's really just on your onus to generate revenue. Um, And obviously, if you are fired from your job, you're going to have a lot of a lot of time to be able to find ways to generate more cash and more revenue for that side business. The other thing is that. The cool thing as a, as a business owner is your taxes don't come into effect until you write off all of your expenses. Think about that for a second. If, if you're trying to live your daily life, um, you're going to get a paycheck and immediately the government is going to take 
forty percent of off of that um, when it comes to the federal and state government with your taxes. That that's just guaranteed. That's going to happen regardless. They're going to take a chunk of your income before you receive it, and then you're going to have the money to go out there and to buy different things that you need for your life. When it comes to a business, you're actually going to be able to write off or deduct the expenses off of your revenue before the government touches it at all. So let's just say that you bring in $5,000 worth of revenue that month and you have expenses that you wanna write off. You wanna write off your laptop, you wanna write off your home office, you wanna write off um, maybe buying education and training and books that you're using specifically for your business activities. You want to write off marketing expenses like social media, having maintaining these different social media accounts. Maybe you need to buy some software. Um, there are a whole host of things which you can write off or even travel that's related to your company. You can deduct all of those expenses. And then after that, the government is going to take their whatever it is, their 30% um, or you know whatever income bracket that you're in. So that puts you at tremendous flexibility and leeway to guide the structure of your life. And the other thing there being, you're having far more control over um, how this income is going to be affected in a recession because you can decide, I wanna start working a ton more on this side business. You know, It's not gonna be this thing that I'm only putting in 10 hours or 15 hours worth of work. Instead, I'm actually gonna put in a good solid 60 hours and I'm gonna grow that, that revenue. If you already have a, bed, a base of revenue, is gonna be far easier to grow. Now the question is, now that we know this, that um, this is really the the fulcrum, if you will, this is the, the point we're gonna have the most control, what kind of business is recession-proof? Because we've seen how restaurants are not recession-proof, obviously. We've seen how even in real estate, um, tenants are leaving, it's difficult to maintain a real estate property, talking about other types of businesses, shipping and, and physical products, manufacturing, that's all impact, impacted um, in a recession. So what is the actual type of business that you should create that gives you enough diversity in its customers that it will be foolproof when it comes to going into a recessionary period? Well, when I talk about also the, the, the diversity of the customers, think about it this way. If you are living in Man Montana, or you're living in Texas, you're living in Massachusetts or New York, the way that it is traditionally laid out is that you're gonna work for one employer and that employer is gonna be based in that city. If that city is hit with some kind of an epidemic or is hit with some kind of a difficult um, financial climate, then you're gonna be stuck in that environment. But in the online world, if your customers are based in South Korea, or your customers are based in Germany, or they're based in China, or they're based in Australia, well, suddenly your opportunity starts to open up. And that's what's really cool about online business is that you can diversify your, your income because your customers are based around the world. I have people who read my blog, who buy online courses and buy my books, who are all over the world. You know, it's, it's not just based in my own little state that I'm living in. It's from all the states in the United States. It's from all the countries across the world. I'm having people visit my blog, read my articles, watch my YouTube videos, listen to my podcast, buy my books, enroll in coursing, hire me as a coach, etc. So the reason why online business specifically is so valuable as a tool to foolproof against recession is that it allows extreme diversity of income in the way of diversing the customer base that you have. And also some of your customers, you might say, okay, they, they're losing their job maybe also, but then you have customer demographics that are older. You have customer demographics that have a solid business. There are so many different types of people out there in so many different um, situations where in this recession, um, there are people that are growing and that are expanding and they want to work with you to continue to expand, right? So I think that um, when it comes to this economy, the best place you can be in is number one, a business that's easy to start. That's a side business that doesn't take a lot of money, that um, 
is going to be able to maybe be spending 10 to 15 hours a day, I'd say, or a week doing, and just a couple hours a day, um, a business that's easy to operate from anywhere, from a laptop, from home, a business that is going to, if you want to, give ample opportunity for expansion. So if you decide to put in 60 hours of work worth uh, per week, it's going to lead to the same level of results. Kind of like with sales, commission-based sales. If you sell more, you bring home more commissions. So there's really no ceiling on your income. I think that's a hallmark of important business. Um, and, And for me, I think that that's really crystallized. When I started my first blog, I realized the potential for that, being an online expert. And I think blogging is probably the easiest way to get started because you don't have to put yourself out there, your face, or you can do this um, writing from a cafe. You don't really need a lot of equipment. You just really need your laptop and a blog. This is probably the easiest way, I would say, to get started with online business by positioning yourself as an expert and using that to make money from affiliate income, using that to make money from ads, from um, selling your own digital products, eBooks, physical books, um, Audible books, online courses, online coaching programs. These are all very easy ways to monetize that blog. Now, of course, if you're more sophisticated, you could get started doing something like a podcast or a YouTube channel. Um, those are, I'd say, more capital intensive because you got to go out there, you got to buy a nice microphone, you got to know how to do audio editing, you got to know how to put that on um, iTunes, SoundCloud, etc. Or if you're doing YouTube, know how to um, edit video, you got to know how to buy a good camera, how to use the camera, have the right camera lens, how to have crystal clear audio quality, these kinds of things. So it takes it's a it's a higher learning curve um, for the newbie out there. If you've never done anything related to online business, or you're just kind of getting started. Um, I would say starting a blog is probably the easiest way that you can start a part time business, and to use that use that blog as a learning opportunity um, for you. It's kind of like a crash course, honestly, in online business. And you don't even have to necessarily associate your name with the thing. You can just put this out there, start writing articles, start getting traffic to those articles, um, start making money, building up your readership, suggesting products they should buy, making money from ads, um, then selling your own products. And, And you can literally from the ground up, create something out of nothing and have readers from all over the world. It is so freaking cool. This is one of the reasons why I was able to go and travel to a bunch of different countries before this whole coronavirus outbreak. Um, and the reason why I was able to work from so many different environments is because, you know, you're, it, it sounds kind of like, I don't know, scammy or it sounds like one of those infomercials, but you can literally, you can live the lap, laptop lifestyle, man. And um, this isn't just me. There, like I'm a very small fish in this, this huge, massive pond of digital nomads who are killing it. You know, they're working in Chiang Mai, they're working in Medellin, Colombia, um, they're working from, you know, Bangkok, they're going to co-working spaces, see people in Cambodia doing this, um, all over the world. You have people that are just like me who are working from their laptop and um, are making a living doing it. So if that sounds interesting to you, if you want to explore this alternate career path and kind of as a way to, as an insurance policy for setting up a business, a side business, and making that maybe one day your your full-time hustle. Um, Getting started with blogging is the easiest way, the fastest way, and um, the least costly. So I'm gonna link down below to this course that uh, I created on Udemy, Blogging for Beginners. And I invite you to just watch the teaser video for that and see if that's something that you might like to explore, something you might like to sink your teeth in, because if you're sitting at home right now and you have a lot of time on your hands, Uh, that's a really good way to just start to accumulate some knowledge and information and get some education on how this can actually work for you and for your life. And it can work for anyone. You don't even have to be a good writer nowadays, which is, which I think is insane. You know, when I was thinking about blogging, I was thinking about like, this is something where I have to be a really good Hemingway style writer. (laughs) You have to like know what I'm doing. I have to have good sentence structure, good grammar. None of that is true. You look at most of the popular blog articles nowadays and they're infographics, they're lists, 
their the top five ways or the the top best camping grounds in New Hampshire. Like really, you don't need a lot of um, brain power just to put together a simple list or comparing two very simple things. Should you buy this laptop from Apple or should you buy this one from Microsoft? And just a few different bullet points of the the benefits and the pros and the drawbacks. Like those are the types of articles that. Um, do super well nowadays in, in search engines. You don't have to write extensive long articles necessarily in order to become a popular blogger. You just got to know the right content to put out there. And I share all of that in this course, as well as my real income figures, how much money I am making from my blogging activity and give you really clear uh, estimates of how much you can make from this side business and then get into how to get traffic, how to grow your readership, um, different ways you can monetize this thing and also some of the formats that I use for my articles to guarantee that they get traffic out there in the marketplace and they really get some traction. Um, so that way I'm just not, you know, I'm not wasting my time. So I hope you enjoy that. Go and check that out in the description of this YouTube video, the link to blogging for beginners. Start, grow, and monetize your blog. This is a step-by-step system to become a full-time blogger, a great side business for anyone out there. You might think you don't have something to teach people um, with your blog or you know something to write about, but I guarantee you that you do. It could be related to your work. If you're an accountant, other accountants out there want to know how to do what you already have learned. They might want to know, okay, how do I depreciate a real estate asset? Um, what is the difference between a tangible and an intangible asset? These are simple things that as an accountant, if you know what you're doing, you can put that out there as a blog article and you can have other accountants reading your work and you can make money um, from doing that. There, there, literally, there are so many niches out there. If you have a hobby, let's just say that as a hobby, you love to fly drones and you love to take some drone footage and photos and videos, you can make a blog about that. And you can recommend different products in that industry that you have bought before that you think other people would like to to have. You can talk about how do you get the best drone shot? How do you um, make sure that when you're flying this thing, you don't lose um, you know the lose sight of the thing? How do you make sure that you have cool video footage and angles and and et cetera? How do you how do you even get fly this thing when you're just as a beginner learn how to calibrate compasses and um, read the different dials on your your um, your display there. So there's there's infinite numbers of niches and opportunities, and I guarantee you a hundred percent that you have something to add. And not only is it great from an income standpoint, but it also just makes you feel good, man. It makes you feel good to help other people. So go and check out that link, Blogging for Beginners. Check out that Udemy course. I also got a book out there on Amazon, Blogging for Beginners, that accompanies this course. You can pick up a copy and also has an audible version there if you want to listen to it as you're going on the treadmill or you're doing some work or you're um, doing your laundry you know, while you're home at coronavirus. I hope you enjoy it. Um, thank you so much for listening to this video.